The trade deadline for the 2022-23 NHL season is just under one month away. The Edmonton Oilers entered the All-Star break having earned at least 1.8 consecutive games and they're now within reach of the top spot in the Pacific Division. This recent hot streak has calmed the external pressure on general manager Ken Holland to quickly make a move to spark the team, but there are still expectations that he'll make upgrades to the Oilers roster in order to help them go on a deep playoff run this spring. The Oilers haven't had an all-in trade deadline since all the way back in 2006. That season, Kevin Lowe traded the team's first and second round picks along with multiple prospects to acquire Dwayne Rolison, Jaroslav Spacek, Sergei Samsonov, and Dick Tarnstrom, and the team went on a surprising run to the Stanley Cup Final. Might this be the year that Ken Holland makes the big splash that fans have been looking for? Let's go through his history at the trade deadline and the salary cap era for clues on what to expect. Before the 2004-05 NHL lockout, Holland could freely spend owner Mike Illich's money to add star players pretty much whenever necessary, but that all changed when the salary cap was implemented. In his first season in the salary cap era, Holland was quiet at the trade deadline, only adding defenseman Corey Cross from the Pittsburgh Penguins in exchange for a fourth round pick. The Red Wings cruised to the top record in the league that season, but wound up getting shocked in the first round of the playoffs by the Oilers. Holland was more aggressive at the 2006-07 trade deadline. First, he moved longtime Red Wing Jason Williams to the Blackhawks in exchange for Kyle Calder in a deal that freed up some salary cap room. After that, he made a pretty decent splash, sending prospect Sean Mathias in a second round pick to the Florida Panthers in exchange for Todd Bertuzzi. The Red Wings wound up reaching the Western Conference Finals but got edged out by the Anaheim Ducks in six games. Both Bertuzzi and Calder left the team in free agency that summer. Detroit's big ad for the 2007-08 season came in the offseason when Holland signed defenseman Brian Rafalski in free agency. Holland also added to the team's blue line ahead of the trade deadline, sending a fourth and a second round pick to the LA Kings in exchange for veteran defender Brad Stewart. The Red Wings went on to win the Stanley Cup that spring, taking down the Penguins in six games. Stewart logged 21 minutes and 40 seconds per game during the team's playoff run and he signed a four-year deal to stick around to Detroit during the offseason. Yet again, the Red Wings made a big addition in the offseason ahead of the 2008-09 season as they inked Marion Hossa to a one-year deal in free agency. Given that expensive signing and the assets that were given up over the previous two trade deadlines, Holland stood pat at the trade deadline in 2008-09. The Red Wings made it back to the Stanley Cup Final again, but this time the Penguins came out on top, winning the series in seven games. Hossa left the Wings in the offseason to sign with the Blackhawks, and Holland replaced him by bringing back Todd Bertuzzi as a free agent. Detroit made a few deals ahead of the trade deadline in 2009-10, but all of them were minor. The Red Wings didn't win their division that season for the first time since 1999-2000 and they lost in the second round of the playoffs in five games to the San Jose Sharks. The 2010-11 season featured another quiet trade deadline for Holland. The Wings wound up losing in the second round of the playoffs to the Sharks in seven games. Brian Rafalski retired following the 2010-11 season, leaving a pretty significant hole in Detroit's blue line. Holland tried to patch that hole ahead of the trade deadline by moving a prospect and a first round pick to the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for Kyle Quincy. Holland knew Quincy well as the Wings drafted him in 2002, but they lost him on waivers before he found his footing in the NHL. The Wings lost in the first round of the playoffs to the Predators that season, marking the first time they had failed to advance past the first round since their loss to the Oilers in 2006. That summer, the Lightning used Detroit's first round pick to select Andre Vasilevsky. Meanwhile, Quincy was re-signed to a two-year deal to stick around at Detroit. The summer ahead of the 2012-13 season featured a significant loss for the Red Wings as captain and seven-time Norris Trophy winning defenseman Nick Lidstrom retired. After moving his first round pick at the previous year's trade deadline, Holland stood pat in 2013. The Red Wings cruised into the playoffs but lost in the second round in seven games to the Chicago Blackhawks, the eventual Stanley Cup champions. The 2013-14 season was when the Red Wings clearly started to decline. Their 93 points in the standings represented their lowest total for a season since 1998-99 and they got shoved aside in the first round of the playoffs in five games by the Boston Bruins. By this point, it would have made sense for the Wings to start to rebuild their roster, but it was a priority late in the life of owner Mike Illich to see the team continue to extend their historic playoff streak. Holland's big move at the 2013-14 deadline to help push the Red Wings into the playoffs was acquiring veteran pivot David Leguan from the Predators in exchange for Callie Yarncroak, Patrick Eves, and a third round pick. Yarncroak developed into a good player for the Preds while Leguan left Detroit as a free agent in the offseason. Holland again made another pretty big trade at the 2014 
2015 deadline as he moved Matthias Janmark, Matthias Backman, and a second round pick to the Dallas Stars to acquire Eric Cole. He also traded a third round pick to the New Jersey Devils to add veteran defenseman Marek Zidlitschke. The Wings lost in the first round of the playoffs to the Lightning in seven games and both Cole and Zidlitschke left the team in the offseason. Detroit also saw head coach Mike Babcock leave the team to join the Toronto Maple Leafs that summer. Detroit barely snuck into the playoffs in the 2015-16 season as the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference and lost in the first round to the Lightning, this time in five games. Holland's only move this season was moving depth defender Jakob Kindle to the Florida Panthers in exchange for a late draft pick. In the summer of 2016, Pavel Datsuk announced he would retire from the NHL. Holland tried to replace his place in the Red Wings lineup by inking veteran center Franz Nielsen to a six-year contract in free agency. By the turn of the new year, it was clear that the Red Wings weren't going to make the playoffs. Mike Illich passed away in February, and Holland started to move into a rebuilding phase shortly after, as Thomas Yurko, Brendan Smith, Thomas Vanek, and Steve Ott were traded for draft picks. Detroit's streak of consecutive seasons in which they made the playoffs ended that spring at 25. The 2017-18 and 2018-19 seasons saw Holland sell off players on expiring contracts in order to stockpile draft picks. Peter Mrazek and Thomas Tatar got moved ahead of the 2018 trade deadline line and Nick Jensen and Gustav Nyquist were traded away the following year. Following the 2018-19 season, Holland was named the general manager of the Edmonton Oilers and he was replaced in Detroit by Steve Eiserman. The Oilers got off to a great start in Holland's first season in Edmonton in 2019-20 and he leaned into it by adding three players ahead of the trade deadline. Holland moved two later round draft picks for veterans Tyler Ennis and Mike Green and two second round picks to acquire Andreas Athanasiu, a player he had drafted and developed in Detroit. The season got paused a few weeks later because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the Oilers wound up losing in the play-in round of the summer bubble tournament to the Chicago Blackhawks. In the offseason, Green retired, Ennis was re-signed, and Athanasiu was a casualty of a lower than expected salary cap ceiling. Edmonton cruised into a playoff spot during the pandemic shortened 2021 season in the All-Canadian division, but after trading four draft picks the previous year, Holland was conservative at that season's trade deadline, only moving a fourth round pick for shutdown defender Dmitry Kulikov. The Oilers wound up getting swept by the Jets in four games in the playoffs. In the offseason, Holland made some significant moves, signing Zach Hyman in free agency and acquiring Duncan Keith in a trade with Chicago. The Oilers got off to a great start in 2021-22, but cratered in December and January. Adding Evander Kane as a free agent in January, along with firing head coach Dave Tippett and replacing him with Jay Woodcroft in February, helped turn the season around. At the trade deadline, Holland added to the team's depth by acquiring Brett Kulak and Derek Broussard. The Oilers proceeded to go on their longest playoff since 2006, taking down the Kings and Flames before losing to the Avalanche in the Western Conference Final. The following offseason was spent keeping the band together as mid-season additions Kulak and Kane were re-signed to new deals. And here we are now. Much like last year, the 2022-23 season has been a bit of a roller coaster ride in Edmonton, but the Oilers' recent winning streak has them right in the conversation to finish at the top of the Pacific Division. Also, with the struggles of the Avalanche and the Golden Knights have had with injuries, there's a very clear path for the Oilers to come out of the Western Conference this spring. Many signs point to this being a year for the Oilers to go all in, but that hasn't really been Holland's style throughout his career as a general manager in the NHL. During the late 2000s when the Red Wings were serious Stanley Cup contenders, Holland's biggest in-season trades were acquiring Brad Stewart and Todd Bertuzzi, and he was completely comfortable letting the trade deadline pass without making a move. Holland only ever moved his first round pick once and he never traded his top prospects and deadline deals while with the Red Wings. While winning a Stanley Cup in Edmonton is his ultimate goal, it's also certainly a priority for Holland and his legacy to leave behind a strong system when he sails off into the sunset. With that in mind, it would be very surprising to see Holland sell the farm and deal young players like Dylan Holloway, Philip Broberg, or Xavier Borgo ahead of the March 3 trade deadline for the Oilers to make an all-in run this spring. Instead, there's a pretty good chance we'll see Holland approach the deadline like he traditionally has, which would involve draft picks and mid-level prospects as the main pieces going out, and veterans who can fill specific depth roles on the roster coming back in return. 